be unto Yahweh, Bahashem Yahushai, Bahashem Raka Kodash. Double honors to the apostle elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Peace and salutation unto the elect. Peace and salutation unto all the Akim doing and pushing his word. And all honesty, truth, and sincerity worldwide. Now let's get into this real quick. Vocab scavenging like a seagull, man. Okay. This guy sits down like he, you know, when this handlers leave him, right? And like, we don't even know what to do. Okay, vocab, we don't even know. Go find something, all right? Hurry up. You know, you got you to gotta, you gotta put, put it in, put in some work too, vocab. So here it is. He's talking about, um, you know, the yoke of iron and you know, these nations. And, and then he says all nations. And, you know, he's tripping people up. He's lying. He's a uh, uh, circumlocution. You got to watch out for this guy, you know. But... The question what I would have asked him is, what is this relevant to what I'm speaking about or anything into regards of, like, what, what does this have to do with anything, man? Because they'll come up with these little games first, right? These little tricks to try and trick you into an alley, you know. That's basically it. So they could, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> put their hands all over you, Okay. Don't fall for the tricks. Don't fall for the yoke doke, man. You put them in line. Remember, you're you're the one out there on the highways and byways who's teaching. They're coming up with schemes, gimmicks, and all the rest of the uh, uh, all the rest in the trick back, all right? But your job out there is to be looking for the elect. Prophesy, you know, feed the sheep and look for the elect. To hell with these type. You you already know who vocab is, you know. They're all up to schemes, right? But anyways, let's get into, um, you know, what he was going into. And let's get into some scriptures here. Because the main focus of this Bible is not, even in that scripture, even the book of Jeremiah, I would have asked him, show me where the Lord's talking about repentance for these other nations. Or is Jeremiah lamenting, lamentation for the house of what? For the whole world or for the house of Israel? Show me in this Bible where the Lord is talking about these other nations, where it's redemption time for them and salvation and, you know, change your wicked ways and all this. Show me because in Psalms 147, 19 and 20 and, very, and many other scriptures, the Lord is only dealing with the house of Israel. It's quite clear. OK, it's quite clear that on the top of that, uh, uh, mountain pyramid whatever is supposed to be that beacon of light to give guidance right right that's why the scriptures tell you that when as a matter of fact let me get it real quick that's when the scriptures tell you that when the righteous are in authority the people rejoice right uh let me see here when the godly are in authority the people rejoice but when the wicked are in power are in power they groan right so when the righteous are in authority, the people are rejoicing. They're happy. They're all glad, okay? They're not, uh, you know, living the wrong way. They're not being poisoned. They're not being sickened, okay? They're being shown the right way. And who was given these law, statutes, and commandments that all these other nations shall look upon them and say, oh, wow, you know? Um, Behold, I have taught you, verse 5, Deuteronomy 4 and 5, Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as Yahweh, my power, commanded me that you should do so in the land where you go to possess it, and keep thereof, and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this, this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is it so great who have God, Yahweh, right? So nigh unto them as, and to prove that too, hold up, prove that too. Scriptures don't skip a beat, man. When you got people like Vocab coming out there, you know what he's up to. Psalms 144 and 15, happy is that people that is in such a case, yea, happy is that people whose power is Yahweh, okay? So going back into this, for what nation is so great? 
is there so great who have God so nigh unto them? As Yahweh our power is in all things that we call upon him for. And what nation is there so great that have statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? Okay. So let me see in the NLT. And you will display your wisdom and intelligence among the surrounding nations. <laughs> How wise and prudent are these people of this great nation? That's why you see when you go into Lamentation, they go, is this the joy of the whole earth? The perfection? Because we were really supposed to be that beacon of light for all nations. And when I say that, underneath our foot, Meaning to, uh, oh, I want to be, I wish I could be an Israelite, man. Man, look, look, look. Oh, man, they got God so nigh unto them. Yo, they got law, statutes, and commandments, man. You know what, what, what? The Lord said that he severed us from other people. He is holy and we're holy, okay? Not all the people in the world. Where does it tell you in the scriptures that it says that all these people in the world are holy? Where does it tell you in the scriptures that I gave all my commandments unto all the people of the world? All nations, Moab, Edom, all of them. Where does it tell you that? It doesn't. So, you know, vocab always trying to fit. And like I said in the, in the description here, I said vocab scavenge, scavenging like a seagull, man. The Lord is only dealing with Israelites. He's not dealing with the rest of the world, man. And going into what he said about, let, let, actually, let's bring it up. What was it Jeremiah twenty eight, and even in Jeremiah twenty eight, and, and uh, eight, okay, it tells you that like, hey, you've gone, you know, the prophets, they've done this many times. They've gone against many different kingdoms and prophesy of destruction, pestilence, and whatnot. It's right here, okay. So, was it for the other nations to get their shit together? Or was it for Israel to get their shit together? This is why you keep going into captivity. And we're going to prove the fact that, you know, the Lord, when you go off, when we go off, the Lord sends a nation above us and puts a nation above us, puts us in captivity. Whether we're paying tribute, hard bondage, whatever it may be. Or we're in captivity. And then the Lord says, you know what? These people still want to you know, all right, we'll put some more hard bondage on you. And that happened in Egypt too as well. They put more hard bondage on the people. Each time they kept coming back, they required more and more of them, right? And, you know, some may say, even these uh, commentaries, the scholars, whatever, they're not prophets. They're even making the distinction between wood and iron, because there was iron back then too. But they're making the distinction that... Um, <laughs> Look at look at the uh, bondage, the the um, servitude. Okay, what would be the sense of taking precious iron and putting it upon these people's necks, right? Versus the wood, but what it's really going into is the contents of harder labor, a strict, a more stricken uh, servitude. Okay than the wood. The iron would be more harsh servitude than the wood. But vocab, people like that, you don't got no spiritual eye. You wouldn't understand that. Okay? So going back into this, uh, what did he say? He said, uh, uh, I put a yoke of iron upon all these nations that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. Now, what we'll uh, Apostle Elder Tahar was making a point. He said, which Nebuchadnezzar? Okay. <laughs> that you, you see, these are the punches, the side jabs that you weaken these Christians down with when they come up with these watered, watered down arguments talking about this wine and it's not wine. It's just a bottle of water. This is sparkling wine. No, it's just a bottle of water. You beat them these ways, okay? You ask them, you know, you would say, Assyrian or Neo? 
and you know test them bring them in those waters where they can't swim and they swim with you you going back slowly and slowly you know neo assyrian babylonian what do you mean by that hey the time of sergon or shalomanessa would you know you start flinging things out there and you'll see you know because they don't really i mean some of them they go and study the timelines and whatnot but you could sink them okay you could easily sink them so when you come to find out that they don't know which nebuchadnezzar they haven't studied they don't know what's going on you could you know not uh, in a uh not in a uh, unrighteous sense, but in a righteous sense, you could trip them, okay? And obviously, you're going to hit them with scriptures, which is the truth, and you're going to attack, you know, what it is. Because the way that they're trying to, they're trying to bring you into a back alley, like I said. They're trying to align the setup. But all you got to do is bring the truth. You know, hey, which, uh, which Nebuchadnezzar are you talking about? How much? Okay, who who did this? Uh, uh, Assyrian, uh, uh, Babylonian, who did they conquer? Who did his father conquer? Who did he conquer? How did his uh, military campaign go when he tried to do it himself? Now underneath his father, how did that go when he tried to conquer Egypt? He starts flinging these questions out there, and then they get to realize, and they they don't really know what they're talking about. So. Like Apostle Elder Tahar said, now all these Egypt wasn't underneath uh, this uh, Nebuchadnezzar. Go read about his father. Go read about the Assyrian Babylonian captivity and the Neo uh, uh, Babylonian captivity, if I'm not uh, mistaken. The Neo Assyrian. Uh, Slack here. The, the near. Uh, how do you say it again? Neo and then the Assyrian. Okay? That's how you just drown them. You start asking them questions on which 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 kingdoms were underneath. Who did they conquer? And then everything starts to unfold. You know? Everything starts to unfold. Because really, when he's going at this scripture here with the iron, the iron, the iron. He's trying to uh, 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 fling it back to Deuteronomy 28. If you, might, if you have your mind open, you can see that. Because when he started speaking, da, 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 I knew it. I knew it right in my heart. I said, this fucking guy, Salakio, I can anticipate that he's probably trying to pull this somehow, uh, simulate this somehow with Deuteronomy 28. Okay? The yoke of iron. Okay? But in Deuteronomy 28, it tells us that following up, when you put it all into context, it tells us that we're going to be in another land where we we don't know we've never been to this land before so how how hey we're we know all those areas of the um old world okay this is the the new world here the known world okay or it's like in the new world right and at that time the known world was only you know three parts this is the fourth part so you know, these guys don't, you know, this is how to show that the Spirit of the Lord is not working with them, man. Okay? But going back into this. So, when the Lord puts a nation or nations into captivity, let's go into Romans chapter 13 and see what it says. Romans chapter 13 and verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For the, You know what? Let me get in... Uh, So, you know, these guys don't think. These guys don't think, man. They don't think, okay? Everyone must be subject to government authorities for all authority comes from God. You see that? And those in positions of authority have been placed there by God. Just so you can get a better understanding, right? So the powers that be over us, because we did wickedness, I'm going to prove that going back into Baruch, that the Lord uses these other nations over us, right? So, the question would be, you know, vocab should have come with that question a little bit better. I, I kind of I kind of see what, you know, he should have said instead of saying what he said. 
But when these nations that are in power, right, the Babylonians, let's say when we're underneath the Egyptians, whoever else that they has that they have as as servants, okay, are their servants. They're under subjection to them as well. What the hell is the problem with that? We're going to Esther with Xerxes and see how much province. We'll, 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 we'll follow this up. Um, so anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against what God, Yahweh, has instituted. And they will be punished. See? Because remember when in Acts, Theodos gathered to himself uh, 400 men to go against the powers that be. He was crushed. He was killed. He was put to death. Okay? Bottom line, this is what the Lord set up. You can't change it. You can't, you know, change. Uh, let me see it. Let me go into the scripture. Force the course. Uh, uh, is it here? Let me just slow down and see. Um. Oh man, it was uh, right, yeah, fuck, Solakia. It says, um, don't uh, f force the course of the water. Let me see this, uh, hold on. Course of the water. Days. Let me see if I can find it. I think it was right. I can't remember. So, okay. Could it be in um, Second Timothy? There's a scripture that said, uh, don't try to um, change the course of the waters. Or I knew it was here somewhere, man. I just can't find it. But anyways, um, six, hold on a second. You know what? Let me go here real quick. No, I can't find it. I can't find it. I can't find it. But, um... Let's go to the Philippines. No, I can't find it. But anyways, let's go back into this, man. So, you know... You can't go against what Yahweh Shem Yahweh has set up. And if he has set up Nebuchadnezzar... Um... You know, uh, uh, Xerxes, who else? Um, you know, Julius Caesar, all these different people that he put above us, okay? You can't change. In Daniel's, it tells you that the Lord set it up another, put down one, set it up another. You can't change the course of the waters, man. Is that it? Change the course of the water. Let me see. Hold up. 
change the course of the water. going back into this so what the lord has set up that's what he set up you can't put a dent in it you can't do anything but follow you know what is set up okay because if you if you try to go against it you're going to be punished very highly okay so going back into this let me see um so we got romans let's go into esther i want to get esther one Oh, slot here. One and nine. Also nine and um, nine and uh, thirty. Uh, Esther. Now it came to pass. Now it came to pass in the days of Xerxes. This is Xerxes, which reigned from India, even unto Ethiopia, over a hundred and twenty. Uh, provinces, okay? Are they not all in subjection underneath him? Okay. Then they have to pay a uh, tribute, okay? Um, let me scroll over there one here. 30. Yep. And he sent any, uh, Esther 9 and uh, 30. And he sent the letters unto all the Jews to the 120 and seven provinces of the king of king kingdom of Xerxes with words of peace and truth okay so all those who are under him are they not subjected to him so if Israelites are going to you know let's just say it like this with Antiochus didn't he not say to the people that all the heathens should put away their laws and become one people so what, he's going to exclude the jews no he's going to say you too you too you got to put away your shit it's written in in first maccabees you got to put away your shit and come join these laws man come join the sacrifices come you know even in um was that second maccabees six you know and, and uh uh it says that you know, they were brought brought in with bitter constraint to eat the, the swine's flesh, right? And the heathens were like, yo, these guys should put away their laws, man. Come join and, you know? So, a decree that goes out from the king is a decree that goes out from the king. He's on the authority of the Most High. The Most High put him in that position, okay? That power position, that position of authority. So, I would have said, what's the problem with... with with reading that scripture well what is it what is your point that you're trying to make with that scripture okay anyways let's let's continue on yep daniel i mean the point is made but daniel let's go to uh, 43 and 44 and whereas thou saw sawest iron mixed with mer uh murray and clay they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men but they shall not cleave one to another even as iron is not mixed with clay and in the days of these kings shall the god of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed isaiah 45 and 17 and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever, okay? For as much as thou... And let's talk about our kingdom standing forever, okay? Isaiah 45 and 7, 17, war without end, okay? For as much as thou sawest that the stone that the stone was cut out of the mountain with our hands 
and that it break in pieces the iron and the, uh, the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. The great God, the great God, have made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure okay so as you can see the only reason why i read that was to get into those kingdoms the um the iron the brass the clay the silver the gold all those kingdoms whoever was underneath those rulers were subjected to what those rulers wanted what those rulers expected, okay? They were subjected to those rulers. What What don't you understand? And whatever nation, either outside of, of Israel, okay, or peoples, okay, they would expect to be paying tribute and do damn near the same damn thing. So I don't know what vocabs... you know, mental. That's why I say he's scavenging like a seagull, man. And you see seagulls... Sometimes they pick up things they think is food, but it's not food. You know what I mean? And they start chopping down on it. You know? And let's go into this real quick, because it has to be said that... What's, what does that have to do with the whole program, with the whole, with the whole, um, you know, objective here, where we're looking for the elect, and this is only for the house of Israel? What does, what does that have to do with anything? When a kingdom comes and takes down another, let's say, let's say like right now, let's say the Russians came and took took over Europe. Those Europeans are going to have to follow what the Russians require. Do you understand? And let's say Israel is amongst them. You're going to have to follow too. What the fuck? We, we going to have to follow. We're going to be subjected to the same, you know, environments and probably even harsher because that's the, the other thing that they didn't like about israel they said look uh ezra in ezra chapter 4 they said look go search the records yo these people rebel they're rebellious they won't pay tribute this and that blah blah, blah. you know man this this guy's you know he he's foolish man <laughs> he's really foolish man Second Ezra chapter five and verse uh, twenty-seven, and among all the multitudes of people, thou hast gotten thee one people. Because when you go up, it tells he has a favorite land, one pit, right? He has a, a a favorite flower, he has a favorite bird, the dove, all of that. So well, what's the problem, vocab? Okay. And unto his unto this people whom thou lovest. Thou givest a law that is approved of all. See, going back into Deuteronomy and Psalms 47. And now, O Lord, why hast thou given this one people over to many? And upon the one root hast thou prepared others? And why hast thou scattered thy only one people among many? Okay. Well, we're going to the scriptures and show you why this happened, okay? How we went off. What does it say? Baruch chapter 4 and 6, you were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because he moved God to wrath, you were delivered unto the enemies, for you provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not to God, Okay? You have forgotten the everlasting God that brought you up. And you have grieved Jerusalem that nursed you. So this is why we're sent into these different nations, having their feet upon our necks, as it tells us right here. Uh, 25, my, my children suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from God, for thine enemy have persecuted thee, but shortly thou shalt see his destruction and tread upon his neck. That's not just going into one people. That's going into many people. Okay? Because when you go into uh, two, it tells you that 
you know, um, in the land of their captivities, okay? Captivities, different lands, okay? So going back into this, you were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because you moved God to wrath, you were delivered onto the, onto the enemies, okay? So it's plain and simple. So we're under authority of whoever, you know, whoever is in uh, power, right? Because we went off. And whoever's in power, you think they're just going to look at us and be like, yeah, that's the gem right there. These guys are going to make me so much money. No, they're going to move on to the next land and the next land and conquer and conquer and conquer. Man's going to serve the Lord, okay? Which king sits back and says, yeah, I just want to conquer the Israelites. I just want to conquer these Israelites right here. Yep. This will bring me so much. Uh, uh, no, they're going to conquer other people too, man. In their mind, you know, their God is more powerful, whichever nation it is, right? In their mind, their God is more powerful, right? And they are subject to the flesh, right? So they're going to say, I want jewels. I want gold. I want your gold. All right. They're not going to say, I just want Israelite gold, Israelite money. No, I want all the gold of the world. Their whole thing is to be the richest and powerful before they leave, you know, leaving that legacy, right? So anyways, that's why we are sold on to these nations, okay? That's why we went through what we went through, okay? The Lord don't love these other nations. You can clearly read that in the scriptures, man. What's your problem, vocab? You're just trying another scheme, and that scheme won't work. Like I say, you're like a scavenging seagull, man. Picking up any old rock, stone. You know, that shit is not edible. You can't feed your flock with that. Amos chapter 3 and 1. Hear this word that, ye that Yahweh has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, Only you have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. You see that? So what if, you know, this kingdom took over, right? This is what the Lord said. You're going to put these nations upon us and punish us for our iniquities. This is why we're sold on to these nations, to punish us for our iniquities. He didn't want to destroy us fully. Could have done that with uh, Moses. He told Moses, get back. I'm going to make a nation out of you. But Moses besought the Lord. So, while we're being punished for our iniquities, you, you think the Most High doesn't have the kings rule over other people too and punishing them too as well? Forget what's happening to them. This whole story is about us. It's not about them. Stop trying to mix the them with the us. Okay? This is an Israelite family storybook, man. When you have a, a, a picture book, you might have some people in there that they're like, yo, who's that? Who's that? And then this is what the scriptures give you the explanation. That's this nation. That's that nation. Like I would say, that's the gardener. You know, the only reason he's in that photo is because, you know, your sister was standing there and he was in the photo. Oh, that's a butler. The only reason he's in that photo is because this is after your graduation. Your sister wanted to take a picture right away or your brother, whoever, whatever the fact may be. Well, who's this hugging, um... Auntie so and so. Oh, he married in through uh, marriage, whatever. That's why he's in this photo. Okay? Or as they would say, married in. You know, you get what I'm trying to say. But he wouldn't be of my family. The explanation would be how the hell did he get in there? Oh, he took her as a wife. That's the only reason you see him in that photo. Just like, why are these other people being spoken about in the scriptures? Because. These people inflicted us. These were our enemies. These were people that we were told to stay away from. Don't do like. Don't be like. These were examples onto us. Not how to walk in the world. So the Lord has shown us examples in these nations. Not how to be. And he's shown the world. You know. Who he's dealing with. Which is Israel. Okay. Us Israelites. And I must say this too as well. Nebuchadnezzar and all those enemies, these guys are our enemies, man. It tells us right here clearly. Let's get this real quick. Psalms 83. Because when you go into the 13th, uh, 12th verse, 
who say, let us take to ourselves the host, hosts of God in possession. And who's the hosts of God? These tribes can also be accounted as nations too as well. Did you know that vocab? Betty didn't know that. But anyways, so these houses of God would go into the uh, tribes or, you know, you could say the whole house, but it, it, you can branch them off into different houses, the house of Judah, the house of Benjamin, the house of, uh, you know, and so forth. So anyways, going back into this, who, who, who said, who say, let us, let us, who's the us, take to ourselves the houses of God in possession. Okay, so going back into this, who's saying this? Psalms 83 and verse 2. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, let us cut up, come, let us cut them off from being a nation, who's to them, Israel, that they that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance and it goes on to tell you who com who conspired okay who who consulted together to do this ishmael edom moab the hagarians ammon amalek you know all of them they all joined forces to cut us off this is why in lamentation tells us that they walk by and they all you know shake and wag the head and clap right because this is the moment that they've all been waiting for to see us swallowed up. Have you ever been swallowed? <laughs> to see us swallowed up, man. Honestly. To see us destroyed as a nation. Okay? This is why they fucking, um, you know. Uh, that's why it's spoken about in Lamentation the way it's spoken. Okay? So. These nations. They've all had a part in our downfall. Okay? This is why. And they've all had their foot or some part to do with our uh, captivity. Whether they sold us, whether they particularly had us, you know, in a particular type of uh, captivity. Doesn't matter if it was for five years, 27 years, you know what I mean? 400 years, whatever, you know. First Maccabee chapter 2 and 10. What nation have not had a part in her kingdom and gotten of her spoils all right so this is to all those nations who have taken us captive you know or we've been underneath their feet but the main point still stands vocab you scavenging like an eagle man the lord is only dealing with israel and the earth is given into the hand of the wicked right now the whole world is subject and we see what you know, Edom is doing to these other nations. Right? You see what Edom is doing to these other nations too as well. We're not just on the, only us on the chopping block alone. But all... Remember in Isaiah, uh, Deuteronomy, it tells you amongst all these nations, you're going to get no ease. So no matter what country we're in, they recognize and know all those fucking Israelites... We, we, we have a, uh, you know, we got a, uh, what do you call that again? A treaty to basically take these niggas out, man, and keep them underneath our feet. Because anytime these niggas go to their God, we're below them, you know? But little do they know, when you're underneath, or if you're underneath the Israelites, you're going to be living good. You're going to be happy. Your ear is going to be clean. There's going to be clean fish. You won't, like this fucking idiot, you won't have to wear a mask all the damn time, you know? So, hey, man, this guy's uh, confuses all day, you know? Confuses all day. This vocab character, he, he confused, man. He's confusing bread with sticks and stones, okay? Like an ego scavenging. From a distance, he looks at it, he goes, oh, man. Flies down, you know, he thinks there's a piece of... Uh, uh, lasagna, you know, a piece of spaghetti. It's really a fucking plastic uh, stick or a plastic straw. You're all over the place, vocab. Sorry. Whatever you're trying, it's, it's not, it's not going to work, man. Okay? It's not going to work. 
So with that, all praises, all honor, all glory be unto Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Bahashem Raka Kodash. Double honors to the apostle elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Peace and salutation unto the elect. And peace and salutation unto all the Akim doing and pushing this word in all honesty, truth, and sincerity worldwide. And, you know, a shalom to you and sisters too that listen and follow along. And with that, Wahabad Baban. Shalom Akim.